So, welcome to um, another completely unrehearsed video. Uh, this is part six of my Core XY printer build for anyone that's interested out there. As you can see, the uh, landscape behind me is starting to change somewhat. And I managed to scrape together some, some money and um, destroyed the old printer to salvage the parts and made a start on uh, building the new one. So I've basically got the, uh, the basic skeleton, the frame, uh, more or less finished now. Uh, I just wanted to talk a bit about how I actually um, put extrusion together. It's not a unique technique, um, but some people might not be aware of it. Um, got some demo bits. So rather than using um, angle brackets and so forth, um, what I do is tap the end of it, the extrusion and um, insert a couple of button headed screws. So open build extrusion comes with um, holes in the end which, which happens to be um, just the right size for an M5 threaded bolt. And these button headed screws fit nicely into extrusion like that. So that's basically how it how it goes together. So what you, what I do, you have to have access holes in the other bit. So put them together like that, and then somewhere, and then put a hex key in through the access hole, tighten the screw up, and it pulls the head of the head of the screw up against the, the extrusion that's basically what holds it together so it makes a very secure joint downside is there's very little adjustment and the um, the ends of the extrusion obviously have to be dead square you can't um, you can't adjust if they're not square you can't adjust it so they've got to be dead square so what I do if I'm cutting extrusion myself um, so some of these members I had to chop down from what was left on the other printer. Um, <clears throat> I cut them a bit oversized in length and then I basically mill the ends on my milling machine so it makes them dead square. But it makes um, quite a neat job of things and it probably costs less than making or buying um, right angle brackets to bolt everything together. But you can't easily take it apart of course so you need to be sure that when you start to assemble it that you've put all the access holes in the right places and if you're gonna bolt anything to the frame like panels or cable trunking or mounts motor mounts or lead screw mounts anything like that that you're going to use a t-nut then you need to make sure that you've got all the t-nuts in as you put each member so what i did before i started i basically went through and i marked on my um on my open scad plan where all the access holes needed to go and denoted them with a cylinder And then I did the same thing for all the T-nuts. So in terms of the access holes, um, the biggest you can go is about 5mm and a hex key is about 3mm. So you've effectively got about plus or minus 1mm of tolerance on where you put so the holes have got to be accurately positioned um, if not you try and put it together and the screw head doesn't quite line up with the access hole you can't get the allen key in there to tighten it out properly so they've got to be pretty accurate uh, in terms of the um, the t-nuts surprising how many you need actually if you're going to start putting panels and things on it's, it's quite remarkable how many t-nuts you actually need and then you have to consider things like um, 
if you're going to use cable chain that's got to be bolted to the frame somewhere any lights you're going to fit basically if in doubt fit a t-nut because <laughs> you because it's a lot easier to do it at the start and so you can't really get the frame apart once you build it you can use those um the drop-in ones these ones which when you put a screw on them look like that and then they will they will drop into the frame afterwards and then in theory when you turn the screw the nut itself rotates in the groove um, they didn't always work very well so they're really fiddly but if you forget to put a T-nut in then you need one um, they can save your bacon but it's a lot easier to use the ones that slide in at the start so here's some pictures as far as I've got I guess if I was starting again the way that I've done the tension is using two captive screws um, I would probably just use a single screw because of the way it goes together you have to turn both screws simultaneously or you've got about a quarter of a turn on each one so if I was starting again I would just use one tensioner screw rather than the two that I have So that's probably it for now, just a very quick update. I'm currently waiting for some um, cable chain to arrive for my pull-out drawer that I've got on the bottom. And then once that's come, I can fit that and then I can lay out everything that I want to fit in that drawer. So that's the power supplies, multiple, um, the DC UPS, um, some actual back battery, backup batteries, as well as the control boards and so forth. And I might stick a little ESP32 module in there um, to do other things like maybe control the lights keep a check on temperature and humidity and, um, and bits and pieces like that I've got a 5 volt supply a 24 volt to 5 volt PSU um, anyway so I might as well make use of that so that's about it for now uh, just a quick update and um, i'll keep you posted when i've got more to say thanks for watching bye